welcome back and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the almighty uber shader that is the Pixar surface and with this single shader you can pretty much make anything that you really want to so you can make wood you can make metals you can do skin you can create amazing car paints you can do glass fabrics neons and pretty much anything in between Okay, so let's get going. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to give you an overview of all of the parameters within the Pixar surface itself. And then in later lessons, we'll deep dive down into the more detail for each of these parameters. And I'm going to show them to you in a, a practical use, but also we're going to do some fun creative materials as well. Okay, so let's start at the top here with Diffuse. Now there's a number of options here. The first one here is gain, which is the um, weight that's applied to your diffuse channel. This here is the color. You can choose whichever color you want. And then basically this is where you would also input your texture maps. And then this here is the roughness for your diffuse channel. So moving on now to the speculars. And the great thing about the Pixar surface is it has three different specular lobes. And the way it works is that the rough is at the bottom, the primary is in the middle, and then right on top of these two you have the clear coat. But we're not going to worry too much about these in this lesson. And I'm just going to show you on this specular lobe how the fundamentals work. So it has two different modes that you can run in. It has an artistic mode where you can set the edge color and you can also set the face color. And then it also has a physical mode as well, which works off the refraction index and the extension coefficient. So here you've got some presets so you can have chromium and then you set the edge color. But like I say, we'll get to this in further lessons. So now moving on to iridescence, which you find a lot in the real world on sort of objects like peacock feathers and beetle shells and pearls and holograms and soap bubbles. And like the specular, it runs in two different modes. It has this artistic and it also has a physical mode as well. So in the artistic mode, it works on the edge gain and also the face gain. And then if you then put it into physical mode, it then runs in a different way. And then you also have this roughness slider here as well. Okay, so now let's move on to fuzz. Let's get rid of the iridescence. Now, fuzz is really useful for adding sheen to fabrics. So things like velvet, and you can also use it to add like a fine powder on top of objects as well. And if you read the um, documentation, it sort of describes it as introducing a bit of retro reflection. So if you ever think your model's missing something, maybe a bit of retro reflection is what it's needed. So again, you can just, slide up the gain and I'm going to make this a bit more obvious to see by making it red and then if I increase the cone angle you can see that it now adds a sheen to the edges of the of my model okay so that was fuzz now let's move on to some subsurface scattering and you've got two parameters here the first one here is pretty complex but it's really good for things like skin and food and milk and wax and here you have a number of different models and then you underneath it here you have a single scatter which is basically a, a more simpler version and is less render intensive okay so now let's move on to glass turn that off so the interesting thing about the glass parameters here is that you have these two sliders that control how much refraction and reflection get applied so here i can turn this all the way up to one and now this is a completely refractive object and then i can then start to apply reflection as well this here allows me to change the color of my glass. And then this is also the roughness. And like most of the other parameters within the Pixar surface, glass also has an advanced tab. And within this one, it controls things like refractive index. And you can also determine whether your glass is thin or thick. Okay, so now let's move on to one of my favorites, which is glow. And I've used this a number of times over the years for all sorts of things like neon signs and kind of emissive TV screens and just anything you really want to glow in the dark. So it works pretty simply. You just increase the gain and then you give it a color. And now you have this emissive teapot. And if I go ahead and turn the dome light off, I've now got a glow in the dark teapot. So you can also plug in textures to the gain and also the color to get other kind of creative looks. And the last two things I want to show you are within the globals down here, you've got this bump parameter. And this is really where you can plug in your overall bump or normal map for your entire material. And the last one here I wanted to show you was presence, which is basically the opacity of your object. 
So I hope this has been useful. And like I say, it's just been a quick overview of the Pixar Surface. And in the next few lessons, we're going to really go down and deep dive into all of these parameters and see what amazing creative materials we can make with them. <laughs>